G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. We're continuing with redoing the network here at Backyard IT and this is one of the three managed switches I picked up from a friend at his computer business yesterday. This is this Cisco SG300-2828 port fully managed gigabit switch. And uh, I thought I'd just take you through a few things that I've managed to do with it so far this morning. So I've got it installed here on the desk. This is what I'm gonna use here in the office. But I thought I'd show you the management interface nevertheless. Remembering that it's actually getting all its information from OpenBSD. I've created a couple of uh, user accounts already. But I just thought I'd take you through some of the features and why I like Cisco equipment. Now there are many techs out there who loathe Cisco and I have to be honest with you. I've never actually had a problem with Cisco per se um, Some people say they're rubbish some people say they're good personally as I said I don't have a problem with Cisco I think some of their equipment well, oh, the majority of their equipment is really really good and really easy to work with So here we are in the management interface As you can see here my bookmarks are getting bigger and bigger and bigger Nevertheless, I just thought I'd quickly show you A, how I've got this now set up and B, some of the functions you get with these SG328s. You've got full uh, stats and statistics. I almost said statistics, but uh, nevertheless. Full interface configuration, so you can select your interface uh, ports and everything like that. You've got uh, ether-like setup as well. You can see there. You've got the ability to add a Wi-Fi extension hotspot if you require. Full administrative system, including full reboot, so you can reboot the system from the management interface. You've also got full LLDP and CDP, is it? Yeah, discovery. Ping and trace route functionality, if you need to trace routes between the switch and the server to find out what's going on. Full port management, including link aggregation, green ethernet, power, etc. Um, your link aggregation, you can see there you can have your LAN management systems. And you've got either MAC address balance or IP MAC address balancing. Green power ethernet systems as well. As you can see. Scroll down a bit further, we've got smart, smart port management systems as well. You can pause on all these, including full um, router switch, host, the whole lot. VLAN management, another very important thing for networking these days. You can create local VLANs. Now, what that means is <clears throat> you might have this separated into multiple network access systems. For example, you may have two... Uh, domain servers, a pair, uh, say a forest and a child coming into this switch and you can create link aggregations between both your uh, server systems for your end users. You can see it all over there. Full spanning tree as well. MAC address tabling, so you can assign specific MAC addresses to certain areas, including reserve and everything. Full multicast ability as well. I can't get it all in the screen, I'm into the video, I'm sorry. IP configuration. Now you can set this up as a DHCP relay server if you wish, including also domain name servers as well, so you can put in your uh, DNS servers. Security control, including denial of service, pre denial of service prevention. Very important in today's environment. Oh, hang on. You can see there you can go to security suite settings, everything like that, which is really good. Full access control, Mac based, IP4, ACL, access control lists and ACE control lists and everything like that. Quality of service, so you can uh, ban share it, QoS the whole switch if you feel necessary in case you're running a uh, very heavy network. Well, you've control statistics, as I call it, and then simple network management protocol services. And as you can see there, and everything like that. Okay, now, so basically that's where I've got to so far. 
which is really handy, really good. So the next thing I've got to do is obviously um, I've sorted out this side of it. I've sorted out some of the problems with the DACP lease timing in OpenBSD, but it's not all finalised yet. Uh, as per a request from a good friend of mine, Cherry Bakewell, I'm getting there, fella. <laughs> I'm slowly getting there, believe me. But, um, yeah, we're starting to get somewhere. Now, just on the uh, physical setup of this switch, now, I've had arguments with techs throughout my career on how these sort of switches should be set up. And um, many techs have called me a complete total F-wit for doing it like this, but it's worked for me in the past. And I have to be honest with you, when it does work for me, I tend to continuously do it because it works for me. So what I've got here is, I've got all my computers and workstations. So we've got the main PC, the Mac's now on a gigabit connection rather than the Wi-Fi connection. We've got the QNAP. We've got the Wi-Fi hotspot for the BSD network, the ESXi server, and this one here. Now, this is the link out to the server. The way I've set these switches up in the past is when you have a group of links like this, now, whether it be SIF links or separate gigabit links, I've always had the server into a separate input compared to the rest of the switch. Now, to me, that is the correct way of doing it. If you have a setup like this, this is how it should be done. If it's in a case of an unmanaged switch, obviously, you would just plug everything in like I have out in the cabinet at the moment. But in the case of a managed system, okay, a managed system, I've always used the separate link group to the server, for example. You may have, say, your main PDC forest followed by a child domain coming into this and then you can you know access point isolate each of these to either access the pdc you know you may have for example um management might have say the first four ports they want access to the pdc and the child and then maybe you may have a group of users only who get dacp dns from the forest so the pdc but they only need to have access to the child PDC or the child domain, so it comes in on here. Now, I've had techs, as I said, rip me a new one and call me a complete F-wit for setting it up like that, but to me, that was the way I was taught how to do networking. And I've set many networks up like that in the past, and they have all worked perfectly with no problem. So there's the Cisco managed switch, the uh, SG3028 28 port, well sorry, try that again, SG300-28, 28 port gigabit managed switch, non-POE, and look, I've got to be honest with you, I've had people ask me, not here on YouTube, but elsewhere, why don't I get a POE switch? Well, simple, I don't have anything that requires POE, so why would I get a POE switch if I haven't got anything that's POE? I realise POE is an extremely powerful tool and very handy, especially for security cameras and that. I don't have anything POE, so what's the point in me having one? Anyway, so there we go. There's the first part of the new network overhaul here at Backyard IT. Um, and then, as I said, later today, we will try and fix the problems out with the e-server. Currently, at the moment, I have it running although it is extremely unstable. The only one that is stable is the main PC because it's statically assigned. But the rest of the system is very unstable and I'm obviously going to have to do something about it uh, during today. Anyway, there we are. There's the first of the three managed switches. We'll catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.